Welcome to the future. Welcome to the Muxall Open Internet of Things video blog. I am your host, Michael Crane. In today's video, we are going to assemble one of our new main PCBs we had manufactured by Seed Studio. First, we'll solder on the surface mount devices. The TI Burr Brown DAC we have has the smallest pin pitch of all our SMD components, measuring in at a whopping 0.65 millimeter pin pitch. <laughs> the Abricon Verister we have, it's in a 0603 package, is the smallest of our SMD components we'll solder on today. The second thing we'll do is we'll solder on all the through hole components. These are the jacks and the connectors and the terminal blocks. The last device we'll solder on today is our big toroid inductor. It's the only through hole electronic device on the board. All the parts for the PCB are nicely packaged in a kit that will be for sale on the Muxall Movement website. The link to the kit and other parts are in the video's description below. So it took me about three hours and 20 minutes to assemble the main PCB. <laughs> so to keep from boring you to tears, I've sped up the video by 520%, which compressed it into about 30 minutes. However, that's still pretty long. So enough talking. Let's get soldering. <laughs> when I hand solder components on a board, I start with the chips that have the smallest pin pitch, which are usually surrounded by their components. So I'm starting with our TI Burr Brown DAC, U102. I'm using MG Chemicals Rosin Flux pen on the solder pads to help the solder stick better. I'm placing the DAC on the pads to make sure the pins properly align with the solder pads. Once I'm satisfied with the pin pad alignment, I add solder to one of the pads to hold the DAC in place so I can solder the other pins. I also make sure I align pin one on the DAC to pin one on the footprint. That's very important. <laughs> I add solder to the tip of the soldering iron and then turn the tip over to solder the pins. The pin pitch of the DAC is so small, I end up soldering two pins at the same time. If the solder mask does its job though, we shouldn't have any solder bridges between pins. U103 is an ST Micro op amp. I do a quick pin to pad check with this chip too. Again, I add solder to one of the pads to help hold the chip in place so I can solder the other pins. Now I'm taking a closer look at the solder bridge between the pins. A bridge is okay if the pins are connected, but bad if they're not. 
So I cleaned some of the solder off to make sure I can see the trace connecting the pads. That's okay. Next, I'm installing U101, our TI analog switch. This chip has a line marking one end of the chip, but doesn't have a dot on the chip telling me which pin is number one. So, I'm looking at an assembled board to quickly verify which pin is number one without pulling up the data sheet or looking at our drawing. Since we're close to Q101, I decided to make it the next chip to solder on. Q101 is an on semiconductor in channel MOSFET. U1 is a TI 3.3 volt to 5 volt transceiver. Now that I'm done with the chips, I start working on other small components that are surrounded by other large components. D2 is a diodes ink Schottsky diode for our 3.3 volt power regulator. Since diodes are directional, you must align the line on the diode with a dot on our PCB footprint. Since I'm working on diodes, I decide to install D1. D1 is another diode zinc shot key diode for our 5 volt power regulator. Its pins are folded under the diode to keep its footprint small, but still have plenty of pin to pad surface area contact. These can be a little tricky to solder and requires more heat to make sure the entire pad is soldered to the pin. Once again, the line on the diode package must align with the dot on the PCB footprint. U3 is our on semiconductor 3.3 volt regulator. Its alignment is a no-brainer.
but soldering the back tab of the regulator to the solder pad needs a lot of heat to get the solder to flow under the tab and make good thermal contact between the pad and tab. U2 is our on semiconductor 5.0 volt regulator. It also needs a lot of heat to get the solder to flow under the tab and make good thermal contact between the pad and tab. Both regulator pads on the PCBs have vias attaching the pads to the ground plane on the bottom of the board to act as a heat sink for the regulators. Because of this, it's difficult to get enough heat using a soldering iron. This would work much better in a reflow oven. There's a little too much solder on YouTube's tab, so I'm using solder wick to remove some of the excess solder. Now that I'm finished with all the chips, I'm moving back to the audio section of the board to start soldering on resistors and capacitors that surround all the chips. All the SMD resistors are Viché, and all the SMD ceramic caps are Samsung. If I can see multiple caps or resistors of the same values and in the same vicinity, I will solder all on at the same time. However, I do not skip around the board finding and soldering light caps or resistors. I find it slower and prone to errors. You'll notice I start with caps and resistors closest to the chips and work my way out. All the caps and resistors are 0805 parts except for R2, the varistor. R2 is the only 0603 part on the board.
R2 is our Abricon 14 volt barrister for DC over voltage input protection. These little 0603 parts can be a little hard to hand solder. If you'll notice with R108 and R109, I only remove one resistor at a time from the package so I don't accidentally put the wrong part in the wrong place. Now that I'm done with all the small parts, I move to the bigger parts. L1 is a Borns 100 micro Henry shielded inductor. Its tabs are on the bottom of the inductor and can be quite troublesome to solder. The alignment is critical so you have enough room to get your soldering iron in the little cutout in the inductor's tab to heat the pad and tab at the same time. As you can see, I'm having a little, little bit of trouble myself. C104 and 105 are Panasonic electrolytic caps. All caps for the audio section are Panasonic. Even though these caps are bipolar, we still maintain the polarized footprints and solder the caps in matching the polarization of the cap. All the power caps are Nichicon polarized electrolytic caps.
C11 and C12 are large Nichicon caps for our voltage regulators. It's hard to see the entire footprint in the microscope, so I have to look between the video camera and the scope to get the caps aligned properly. through-hole parts. Now that I'm finished assembling the surface mount components, I can start assembling the through-hole components. I'm starting with J102, our 3.5 millimeter audio aux input jack. I'm using a very small amount of super glue to hold the through-hole parts in place. There only needs to be enough glue to hold the part in place so I can flip the board over for soldering. Too much glue might cause damage to the PCB if we ever need to remove the part in the future. J1 is our 12 volt power jack. I have to be careful not to get glue on the pins or the plated slots. TB1 is an audio input terminal block to use optional RCA inputs for the AUX input instead of the 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Terminal blocks one, two, and three are for the LCD dim, HDMI power, and audio amplifier. CN1 is the I.O. and power connector for our infrared detector module. Make sure the locking tab of the connector is toward the middle of the board and not toward the edge of the board. CN3 is an I.O. and power connector for our four button PCB board. Make sure the locking tab of the connector is toward the middle of the board and not towards the ed edge of the board. CN4 is the I.O. header connector for the audio board. This connector is not key. CN2 is a 40 pin I.O. and power header connector for a Raspberry Pi single board computer. CN2 is keyed and the key slot must be toward the edge of the PCB and not toward our RPI board. soldering the pins from the back side of the PCB. Now that the connectors are all glued in place, we can flip the board over and start soldering the pins. I'm starting with our power connector, J1. Make sure to apply enough heat and solder to ensure good electrical contact with the plated slots and the jack pins. The connector and terminal block pins are easy and fast to solder. You want to apply enough heat to get the solder down the plated hole, but don't overheat the pin or you melt the plastic parts. You also want a small solder ball covering the entire annular ring of the plated hole.
One quick check to make sure everything is soldered. Excellent. The last thing we will solder is L2, our Born's toroid inductor. No glue is required to hold this part in place. Just bending the, the lead slightly is enough to hold it in place for soldering. Clip the excess leads off just above the solder ball. Then, flip the board over to make sure we have solder all the way through the plated holes. So you can see a small solder ball around the leads on the top side of the PCB. Now that the board is assembled, I'm doing a quick check for shorts on the 12, 5, and 3.3 volt power rails. Since there are caps across all the power rails, you'll see the ohm meter values jump around. If there was a short, the ohm meter would read close to zero ohms. Well, no shorts found. Excellent. Shorts, I'm going to install our newly assembled PCB into a working MX3 test bed. I'm getting ready by shutting down the current test bed and putting on my anti-static wrist strap. Now I'm removing all the cables from the old main PCB board. I'm removing the main PCB from the test bed so I can access the screws holding the RPI board to the main board. I put the old main board off to the side and start installing our new main board into our test bed. All done. Well, <laughs> let's plug this bad boy in and see if any magic smoke escapes. Nope. Excellent. Now, I'm just going to test the buttons and the IR detector to make sure they're working okay. I let the menu disappear from the LCD, then wave my hand over the IR detector to see if it brings the menu back. Yep. All the buttons seem to be working too. Very good. The last thing I want to check is the DAC. So, using the buttons, I select a test song from the menu and hit play. I hear music. In stereo. And it sounds pretty good. Excellent. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we have a winner. I officially give the Seed PCB a big thumbs up. <laughs> well, that's about it for this video. I hope you liked it. If you did, give it a big thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. That really helps. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments under the video. I'll try to answer them the best I can. Thanks for watching and I'll see you later.